Hey guys, so today I'm going to be taking a look at the camera system that I use to create scope camera footage and sniper gameplay videos. Now, if you've seen the likes of Novrich and Bodrups and the plethora of other fantastic airsoft snipers out there who create YouTube scope cam footage, you've got an idea of what I'm talking about and how they achieve it. Namely, by strapping a DV camera to the top of their weapon system, which is a little bulky, cumbersome and not very aesthetically pleasing and definitely not the route I wanted to go. I also didn't want to take the Brain Explorer route of modifying a Mobius or a run cam with 3D printed parts and external lenses etc because I wanted something that would just attach straight to the cam uh, straight to the weapon system, record on one touch, had an optical zoom and recorded to a micro SD card. Now I did some research and I found a company called ATN. ATN are world renowned manufacturers of electronic weapon sites namely weapon sites that record footage. The top line, top of the range is the X site, which is a day and night electronic viewfinder weapon site, which records in 1080p at the touch of a button to a micro SD card. Now I shit bricks when I saw this because it is exactly everything that I was needing, but it was like at a seven to 800 pound price point. So I also probably needed a mortgage. Not one to be defeated, I took a look at the rest of ATN's product line and found the ATN ShotTrack HD. Now this is a five times optical zoom action camera, which is designed to mount straight to a Picatinny rail, record at the touch of a button to a micro SD card, and is lightweight. Here it is. So basically there are two versions. There's the ShotTrack HD and the ShotTrack HD Extreme, or X which has a built-in red laser, which is completely worthless and costs 10 to 15 pounds more. Basically, what I would say to you is don't get the X version, just get the standard version, save that extra tenor, buy a better macro SD card or some batteries. So the camera is built predominantly out of plastic, making it lightweight and water resistant. I say resistant, it is not waterproof, so don't go submerging it in water because you will kill the fuck out of it. It's water resistant, weather sealed and works, guaranteed works in crazy weather. I took it out to Anzio one time in the amazing British weather. It survived. It's still here. It's all good. So the camera is very simple. It comes in 120 grams, very lightweight. Controls all on the back, all the important stuff on the front. The mount is on the top, but you can obviously mount it upside down. Some people complain like, oh my God, you can't actually use it upside down. <laughs> I bought a useless camera because I've shot my squirrels and the footage is all upside down. I'm a dickhead. So basically they're complaining because it's supposed to be mounted this way and they've mounted it this way and the footage is upside down. Now, anybody who's going to be using this essentially is going to be editing the footage. So I don't know what they're on about. Just, just rotate it. I mean, you can invert the camera, invert the footage. Because I was inverted. So basically you can mount it this way, this way, and you can also take this off and put it on either side to mount it on the side of your weapon system, which is great because it keeps that nice horizontal field of view that you're all watching this video in, not like that dickhead field of view where you're like, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. Oh, fucking hell, mate, check this out. I'm a knobhead recording vertically. Oh, nobody wants that sort of thing. So it's great that ATN have thought about this and made it so it's always going to be horizontal. The front of the camera, as you see, which is actually this way, has the lens down here. We've got the laser if you've got the X version. This is the battery cover and this is the micro SD card slot. So the micro SD card slot is, a, again, a weather resistant little uh, flap just here. Underneath there, you can store a micro SD card. It can take between a two gigabyte and a 32 gigabyte micro SD card. I recommend the SanDisk Ultra or SanDisk Extreme Class 10 cards, which are fantastic for HD footage. And obviously, they're just going to be fantastic. They work. They're the ones I've had the best results with, the ones I run all of my uh, action cameras on. Over here is a battery compartment. It uses the CR123 battery, that sh which are pretty much industry standard in weapon sites and other random shit. So... They're really easy to get hold of, quite inexpensive, about a pound each. I picked, I think, 12 up off eBay, for, uh, off Amazon even, for a tenner, so very inexpensive. But do make sure you use the 3 volt versions because you can get 3.2, 3.4, 3.7 volts. 
the camera will max out at 3.4 volts. Anything above that, it will fail to close the video when you stop recording and you will end up with no footage. I learned this the hard way. The first time I took the camera out, I ran my battery down and just grabbed some of my flashlight batteries, chucked one in there, it was 3.7 volt. I recorded this incredible, recorded this incredible duel with a sniper using my APS-2 and shot him right in the face. It was beautiful, it was proper like saving Private Ryan. But obviously because I was using a battery that was far too powerful for the camera, it did not save. Lost the footage, I will never relive that moment. So don't be an idiot like me, use one of these batteries or a rechargeable battery that is below 3.4 volts. The battery compartment is accessible here. You have to use a tool like a, a coin or a screwdriver or a Leatherman or something like that. It is very awkward to open. It's very, very thin. When you actually take the cap off, it's very thin. So when you put the battery in and you put it in, if you wobble, it can be very difficult to get back in. So make sure it's nice and straight and you're getting it in there. It's really awkward to make a, a battery change in the field, uh, but ATN do say you're gonna get around two hours worth of footage from one of these batteries. I found it is closer to an hour and a half. And if you're in super hot temperatures, probably an hour. I've, I've had between an hour to an hour and a half in various temperatures in the past. So bear that in mind, especially if, you're at, if you are at a Milsim event or a bigger operation where you're gonna be in the field all day, you might need to make some battery changes and it is very, very awkward. So make sure you have a coin or a screwdriver or a Leatherman or some kind of other tool so you can do that in the field. The lens, which is located just here, has this tiny little rubber lens cap. Now what you're gonna to wanna to do is mount the camera to your weapon system, take this lens cap off, either put it in your camera bag or, or just eat it. Because if you're an idiot like me, you're gonna leave it on there, you're gonna go out, have an amazing hour and a half of gameplay, and then get back, put the thing down, and be like, oh shit, I left the lens cap on the whole time. I took my uh, DMR out with it on and I had this fantastic shootout, which it was proper akin to enemy at the gates. Me and this other sharpshooter stalking each other with DMRs, like firing rounds at each other, relocating, firing. I was like, this is, I ended up getting him in the head and it was like, 360 no scope headshot, fucking beautiful. It was like hashtag, hashtag wall hacks, hashtag aimbot. It was gonna be amazing. And I thought this video is gonna be fantastic. Already seeing like how I'm gonna edit it and make it look cinematic. And then dickhead left the lens cap on. So don't be like me. I'm a professional photographer as well. You think I'd know better than this. This should be second nature to me. So definitely take your lens cap off. Right here, we're gonna take a look at the lens, which is just there. I'd love to tell you a little more about the lens, like the focal length, what it's made out of, how many elements it has, but ATN haven't released any information other than brilliant lens. It literally just says brilliant lens on their spec sheet. That is it. So what I can tell you is it has a 20 degree field of view. It has a five times optical zoom and it will focus at anything from eight yards all the way out to infinity. So the camera is gonna record 1080p, which is 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames a second. It records this in H.264 codec and saves as a .mov file. This is literally the only file format and the only resolution this camera can record in, which is fine. I mean, I would like to have seen some 60 FPS action there, but obviously I use 60 FPS in my helmet camera and that's great because I'm doing a lot of lateral movement and looking about with that. But with a scope camera, you're not really using the footage where you're shaking the damn thing up and down. You've generally, come to a standstill, you pick your target, and you're very stationary. So there's not a lot of movement going on it, so you're not getting a lot of missed frames. It's all right, it's pretty good. I'm quite happy with the 30 FPS that I've been getting from this. The files, for an hour of footage, it is gonna cost you about 3.6 to four gigabyte of storage space on your micro SD card. So a 32 gig card should last you all day. The controls, even an idiot who leaves the lens cap on can use these controls. They are universal depending on the standard version or the X version, whereas it's off, now it's recording. Now it's off, now it's recording. Like I said in the checklist of amazing things that I wanted, one touch recording. There's no like power button, mode button, and then record, oh shit, I'm in the wrong mode. Still in the wrong mode, oh my God, am I turned on? What's going on? Ooh, turned on, right, cool. So you just flick this switch and it is recording. 
With the X version, you also flick it up this way for the laser, and that's just the laser independent of recording, and then flick it all the way up here for the laser and recording. But again, just get the standard version. You just have to deal with that, and that's it. When you're mounting it on your camera, well, when you're mounting the camera on your weapon system, the biggest tip I have for you is mount it in between the bore of your weapon, so like above your barrel, and the weapon sight, so it's like in between the two. I found from mounting it underneath, on the side, on the top of my scope, generally I mount it on top of my scope, and that's pretty much where I'm probably gonna mount it for the foreseeable future. But when it's anywhere outside of your barrel and scope, if you look through a tiny little murder hole and you know your barrel's popping through there and you know your scope's popping through there, because you can see where you're aiming, you can see the shots going down range, but sometimes the scope cam is gonna be on top of the scope, looking out of the way, it's basically gonna be looking almost always guaranteed at the back of the fucking piece of cover that you're in front of and you think you're like spamming rounds into this guy's face winning the, winning the internet with this video but in reality you're just looking at the back of a bit of wood going oh yeah i'm the best i'm the best oh daddy i'm the best but no you're not because you're a dickhead and you've just made a bit of video on the back of a bit of wood so if you can definitely mount it above your barrel and below your sight bear in mind you might have to raise your sight mounts up because it's not a very streamlined camera, it's quite fat. I mean, then this is gonna be going onto the not very aesthetically pleasing high sight rails, which I'm not a fan of, but if it's doing the job, I guess, who cares, right? So now we're gonna talk briefly about a few issues and improvements. We've mentioned earlier on about the battery issue, where using a battery that's too powerful can completely destroy your footage. And also the battery cover here which could obviously be resolved just by redesigning the battery cap. So maybe ha adding like a, a thumb screw on there or just an easy way to unlock it and remove it without having to resort to using a tool. But I think the best way to resolve all this would be to ditch the CR123 batteries completely and switch out to a rechargeable, removable, proprietary lithium battery similar to that in the GoPro or a Contour for instance. We know it's a proven concept in action cameras, and I think ATN should definitely think about switching over to a unique individual battery that works just for this, because then dickheads like me aren't gonna be coming up and recording nothing because they're using 3.7 volt batteries that are too powerful for it. And I think it'll just resolve a lot of issues, because then you don't even have to have a screw on cover. You can just have a flap like this. Problem solved, problem staying solved. The other issue is definitely this switch. Like I've mentioned before, it's so easy an idiot could, idiot could use it, but it's far too easy just to knock it and end up recording when you don't want to be recording and getting a lot of footage of floor or not recording when you want to be recording and getting no, no footage, which I have done on a couple of occasions and it is really, really annoying. I think the easiest way to resolve that would be to have a little child lock sort of switch in the middle that you gotta push. So you can actually have to push it to the rotate, it's similar to what Canon do on their DSLR mod dials where they've got a button in the middle. They've actually got a push in to actually rotate the mod dial. It stops that being knocked. Really simple issue that could be resolved like that. The other issue I have is the availability of these in the UK. I mean, they're easy to get hold of, easy enough to get hold of, but there is only literally one place in the UK that you can get them from, and that is scottcountry.co.uk. Now, this is because they come from America and they are classed as a firearm accessory and as so restricted from export. So a private buyer can actually go directly to ATN and say, all right guys, hit me with one of these shot tracks, because they'll be like, no. So you've got to go directly to a registered like an official reseller, which in the UK is Scott Country. Anywhere else in the world, I have no idea where you're gonna get one from. You might be shit out of luck if nowhere sells them. Unless you know somebody in America who'll bring one over, but pff, probably not. If you're in America, you can buy them directly from ATN and probably from any shooting or gun store or sporting goods store. The one other thing is the image quality. While it is 1080p, it isn't, as pristine and crystal clear as say a mini DV camera. And this is predominantly down to the size of the sensor that is in this thing. 
because it is really absolutely tiny and it's going to be about the size of my fingernail. So obviously that means it's going to be not overly gray in low light. So it does get very noisy, very gray, grainy and breaks up quite a bit in low light, but it is still very much usable. And this is kind of swings and roundabouts. It's, it's either you go for a DVR, which has a big, bulky, cumbersome body and is not designed for the job, but creates fantastic footage, or you go for something that's small, lightweight and cost effective, but you don't quite get the same quality. Now, saying that, this is a piece of kit that I will definitely recommend for anybody who wants to get into airsoft uh, scope camera sniper gameplay footage because it is lightweight, cost effective, designed for the job, even an idiot can use it. It is practically flawless. So if you are getting into this, definitely recommend it. If however, it's gonna be something you do for a long run and you want that broadcast quality footage, you might wanna look into alternatives like a mini DV camera, for instance. But I'm quite happy with the quality I'm getting out of this. I'm gonna continue using this until maybe I can afford an X site. I've got to do a little more research into them, but definitely this is a great beginner's scope camera. Now, if you want to see more footage of these, other YouTubers out there are using them. For instance, Jet Desert Fox uses them. He puts them to good use in sniper videos with his SR25. I know there's some good videos of him and Novrich taking on a few groups at a, at a big Milsim event and he used a shot track. Also, Jonathan from Airsoftology uses one and he mentioned it recently in one of his Airsoftology Monday videos. So I'm assuming he's probably gonna be doing a review on it soon as well. So keep an eye on those two channels for them. And I know the majority of people who are watching this are Airsofters. Some people might be watching this because they're interested in the shot track. But if you're an Airsofter, bear with me about what I'm gonna say because it's gonna be like talking to the dark side to a Jedi here, but the Hidden Hedgehog. He is a paintball sniper and he uses one of these to create some incredible shots that I thought were impossible to achieve using a paintball gun, but apparently they're not. Fantastic. So he creates incredible sniper videos. And in fact, hold the door right there. Anybody who is new to the Airsoft YouTube game and wants to create incredible cinematic gameplay footage should definitely spend a day watching the Hidden Hedgehog's videos. He uses several different camera angles and he even goes back in situ afterwards to record some drop-in footage of himself, just so like moving through the room and looking dead cinematic and it narrates over it. And it's just fantastic, well-produced, high quality footage that everybody can learn from. So definitely go check that out. In fact, those three guys I've just mentioned, I will put links in the cards at the end, as well as Bodge Ups and I said Bovrich then the bastardization of if, if Novrich and Bojups ran into each other, we get Bovrich, Novrich. So yeah, I'll put links to all five of those guys in the end card, so make sure you check those out. You can also take a look at the rest of my channel. There is some footage in here of me using this on a DMR and on a HPA bolt action sniper rifle. There's also gonna be more footage obviously coming for this in the future, so stick around. So there are gonna be more review videos coming soon as well on the camera equipment that I use. Um, basically just looking at what the GoPro is all about, what the SJ cam is all about, the contours that I use, looking into the three camera setup that I use, which is obviously helmet, selfie and scope. Fantastic setup that is pretty much the, the setup, the definitive setup that Airsoft YouTubers use these days. So. I'll be showing you how to achieve that on a relatively low budget and the kit I use to do that. So hit subscribe if you wanna see that. Also, any other gameplay footage, reviews, and other random bullshit we put up on here. If you have enjoyed this video, if you found it useful, the quick rundown on the, the shot track camera, definitely leave your abuse down below, leave your likes and comments. I'd like to get a bit of a back and forth going about the shot track and anybody has any further questions, leave them below and I'll get back to them in a timely fashion. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to check out CBMPC on Facebook and Patreon at facebook.com slash CBMPC or patreon.com slash CBMPC and you can keep up to date over there with what we're doing, any other stuff that doesn't quite 
make it onto here. We usually end up on Facebook and you can support us on Patreon, but obviously don't feel obligated to do so. So that's pretty much everything for this review. Uh, the, the TLDR is, yeah, these are really good. Go get one if you want to be a sniper YouTube content creator. That's about it. So thanks for watching. I'm Magaz. This has been CBMPC TV. It has taken me eight goes to get this right, but I'm pretty happy now that we've got it. So remember kids, the air may be soft, but our balls are hard.